One of my favorite hacks in Ableton Live is using a tempo track. If you're unfamiliar with a tempo track, I basically drag an audio file in and I set it to be the leader for the tempo and I save my tempo with my song so that when I drag my song into my set, the tempo comes with it. No more automating tempos. There's absolutely no reason to go down to the master track and automate your tempos. But a question I often get after people watch those tutorials, after they experience the training with me, they go, but Will, what about songs that have crazy tempo changes? I do a lot of choir numbers. We're doing uh, kind of some Broadway like show tune type things where uh, tempo is changing. It's the season of Christmas. And so every Christmas song has tempo, crazy tempo changes. What do I do then? Well, I'm gonna answer that question and show you exactly how to do that in this tutorial. Okay, so I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've got a set pulled up here. Uh, let's see if we can zoom out to where you can see the end result of what I did. Um, I'm gonna show the automation and I wanna show you the master track. Now you may have seen this in a, a previous video I've done, but this is for a, a live TV taping for a Christmas special uh, that I just did a couple weeks ago. And in particular, I wanna show you two different songs. Look at the tempo map for this song here. It is all over the place, okay? And then I want you to look at the tempo map for, uh, let's go to this song here, Oh Holy Night. Uh, you could see this doesn't look too, too crazy, but let me bring this up, bring this down, and then you can start to see if we zoom in there, there's kind of constant tempo and then some tempo changes there, okay? So what I wanna do in this tutorial is um, one, break the myth or break the, the belief if you think that's the, a thing, that you can't use a tempo track with songs that change tempo. You 100% can. So I'm gonna show you one, how to do that. And then two, I wanna show you a tip and trick that I do that I actually did on this song, Oh Holy Night, to make it a little easier to adjust tempo when you're live in the moment. These songs are crazy that have the, the retard half, you know, midway through the song and then jump to another tempo. They're all over the place, but we can actually set up and format our Ableton Live files so that we still have flexibility to change our tempo, to really be pros and to serve um, our, our band, our music director, whoever's leading this experience as a playback tech. So uh, one, let's talk about this very first song here. Uh, so let's go to uh, Christmas song. So let me jump you there. Okay, so this is the first one again that's a little crazy. Now, uh, I've talked about in the past how to use a tempo track. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, click the link in the description to check out those tutorials. But I wanna show you what I did for this tempo track. So what I did differently here was I brought the click track for this song up to my tempo track. And you can see I actually warped this uh, click track so that every single one of these click hits, I drug and put on the beat. So what I did is I went through and I selected every single one of my stems. Uh, you can see I've kind of chopped this up since then. I selected every single one of my stems, including my click track, right? So I made sure the very last thing I had selected was my click track. And then I enabled warp so that all of my tracks were warped. And then I went through and added a warp marker for every single one of my click hits. And then I moved that and nudged that onto the grid. Now I'll admit if you're coming from Digital Performer Logic, maybe even Pro Tools, this experience feels a little weird because you're used to changing the grid to fit your music. What we're doing for step one is changing our music to fit the grid. So what I did again is I drug warp markers over so that everything lined up perfectly. And then the key step for this process was I went here to where it says lead and I clicked it from follow to lead. So right now if I press play, you can see the tempo of the song has disappeared. But if I re-enable this, that tempo and all the crazy tempo markings I did has reappeared. So let me let you just temporarily here uh, listen to our click. Let me make sure I have this uh, routed properly for you. Uh, let's set this to external out one and two. Let's make sure our output is set up properly. And um, let's just, again, this is kind of silly, but let's just listen to our click for uh, just a moment and see how this crazy click sounds, okay? Okay, so we go through a crazy section right here. Okay, and again, listening to that and looking at that, you go, well, you know, that's, that's a lot of work, that's a lot of effort. Well, yes, at first I did it to take that click, but to add my warp markers, I had to drag everything over. That was a lot of work, but the benefit of that is that is saved with that song. So if I ever redo this song and drag it into a new live set, because I'm using the click as the tempo track, um, all of this tempo automation comes with it. So for those of you out there that are believing the lie that the tempo track doesn't work, when you have tempo changes and you're going in and redrawing your automation and every time, please, please stop. Use your click track, 
uh, make sure you warp all, all your tracks, use your click track as your tempo track, line it up to the grid, and then enable lead to make sure that everything works. Okay, so that is a huge, huge time saver for me. Now let's go over to Oh Holy Night, because I want to show you, um, this is a really similar song, similar process particularly for me. What I did is I set this up to where I brought in the click track for the song and made it the, uh, the I warped it, I had it locked into the grid, made sure everything was good. And then I looked at this song and I went, okay, so most of the song is pretty consistent. Most of it's actually 60 BPM. There's just these small segments where uh, there's a retard, right? Where we slow down and we, we take something that, um, let's see if we can get this more moderate, we can see. We do kind of a retard there and then what do we do? We jump back up to 60 BPM. So instead of just leaving the, the click track as the tempo track, I thought, well, what if we get into this and we say, let's do the song at 61 BPM and then we retard and then we go back to 61. That's really difficult to do if you just have the click track uh, as your tempo track. So a lot of times what I do, if I think it's a song where we're gonna adjust, the Christmas song was just nuts. I said, I'm not gonna take time to do this. We're just gonna play it as is. And thankfully the MD I was working with was on the same page with me. He's like, just listen to it, Van, just learn it. It's awkward, it's weird. We're gonna make it through and, and everyone did and we were good. But what I did with uh, Oh Holy Night in this case was I brought my click track in, I warped everything to grid, I set my click to be the leader and then I looked and went, okay, most of this is 60 BPM. So I'm just gonna add a tempo track in here that has no audio and I'm gonna just set my tempo to be 60 BPM. And then what I did is I looked at these tempo change sections here and I said, okay, this is actually pretty easy. This is just kind of stair step down. It's not like a smooth transition. It's just really stair stepping down. So then I figured out what those tempos were just by placing my mouse here and clicking. And at, uh, up here it said, oh, it's 56, it's whatever. And I went, okay, that's easy. So then I made uh, tempo tracks and typed in the tempo for those sections. So what this is, what's great about this is again, if, and this actually happened in rehearsal, we went, well, that, that third measure there, that third beat, uh, is really awkward. That's really weird. So I could go in and say, okay, instead of 4467, let's go in and say, let's have the bottom just drop out. Let's go really, really slow on that. Let's do 30 BPM. We'll go from lead to follow, back to lead. And you can see now that tempo, let's play our click here. All right, and the bottom just dropped out and then we hop back in. So if you're doing a song that has tempo changes or has a retard, yes, use your, your click as kind of the, the way to drive that, your click track. Um, but consider adding tempo tracks on top of that to kind of straighten it out. The sections that are pretty solid, use your, your tempo track to say, okay, this is gonna play at 60, and then I'm gonna use tempo tracks to reprogram this so that you have the freedom and flexibility to adjust things in the moment. And that's really, to me, the art of playback. That's the art of going in and serving an artist, serving a song, and, and, and really thinking about service over self. I could walk in and go, there's tempo changes. I'm not changing a single thing. Instead, I want to walk in and go, yeah, whatever you want to do, let's make it happen. Now, the first step to making this happen is you've got to format your songs properly. You've got to have your songs formatted in a way that you can navigate them really easily. You can jump around really easily. And again, step one is understanding what a tempo track is and adding it to your songs. And the best step, best thing you can do to get started with this is head to from studiostage.com slash template, download my free tracks template, which includes a tempo track where you can start formatting every single one of your songs and then using it to build a set with. Uh, also, another thing you can do that's really gonna help is stick around this channel, because I share tips and tricks like this on how to use backing tracks like a pro, how to perform like a pro with Ableton Live. And if you're interested in that, then make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and make sure to enable the bell icon so you see exactly when the tutorials go live. And what I tell people all the time is just look at the tutorial and go, eh, it's not for me or go, ooh, complex you know, warping, uh, complex tempo and time signature changes, that's for me. Click through and watch that tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye.